tuck and uh, got quilt. Octet and star are for Mac Avara invited here. This wäre snacken jak licke norsk. So I. Ha <laughs> Chat GPT makes it possible. <laughs> so um, um, I have to switch to English. I hope um, you can follow me. And I'm going uh, to talk within the next 12 um, minutes about um, the mechanisms of MECFS, what we know now, and specifically about the role of uh, the immune system. And my background is, I guess you said already a bit, I, I'm, I'm a physician, physician for internal medicine and clinical immunology. I also have a background in oncology, like Oystein. Um, I work at Charité, and I've seen my first patients with MECFS um, almost 20 years ago. And then, then I try to um, better understand the disease and uh, to develop um, therapies. So um, I'm going briefly to talk about MECFS as part of post-COVID, then about the role of the immune system, and um, finally about therapeutic trials. And the immune system is a complex system of cells, of soluble factors, and antibodies. It protects us from infections and fights against infections. And these infections, of course, activate the immune system. And during in infections, the immune system can, in susceptible people, get out of control and cause diseases. And one of these diseases is um, or are the so-called post-acute infection syndromes, which became um, very much aware uh, worldwide due to the pandemic and, and long and post-COVID syndrome. Um, but we uh, know that uh, these um, diseases can actually be triggered by numerous other um, uh, viruses mostly. And um, we have different names for these types of diseases. But what is in common that all these um, viral triggers can also induce MECFS. So MECFS is part of the spectrum and is the most severe form of these post-acute infection syndromes. And um, what we've learned is that long COVID comes along with many different symptoms. Um, and the most frequent symptoms are fatigue and post-exertion malaise as in MECFS, and we learned that a subgroup of long COVID patients suffer from MECFS. We did a study at Charité early in the pandemic, and we um, saw patients who um, uh, became ill after a COVID and remained ill with fatigue, with exertional intolerance, and we um, studied them from the beginning on of the disease to see if um, um, they develop MECFS and if this looks similar to um, the MECFS we have seen before um, the pandemic triggered by many other infections and this was the case so irrespective is you get thick following influenza or flu or SARS-CoV-2 the disease is very similar so the key symptoms we heard them already is a severe exertional intolerance called post-exertion malaise, which comes along with the severe fatigue, um, brain fog, pain, sleep disturbances, orostatic intolerance in many, and also the severe hypersensitivity um, many of you suffer from. Now coming to the mechanisms, which are quite complex, um, uh, and we have the strongest evidence, and actually we know for sure now that um, immune activation plays a role, especially um, so-called autoantibodies, uh, but also um, low-level inflammation. Uh, and we also have clear evidence that we have a dysfunction of the stress response and of the so-called autonomic regulation. These are all function as our body controls automatically. So you do not need to think about that your heart beats and that you breathe and how you distribute your blood. And that is sort of out of control in MECFS. And one of the consequences of this is that our energy production also no longer works properly. So um, we, patients with MECFS are unable 
to produce sufficient energy, especially upon exertion, and that completely explains um, the disease. So coming to um, some of our findings, what we've learned from this um, cohort um, we studied um, uh, during the pandemic is that we have inflammation um, ongoing during the first year. And our marker was interleukin-8, which is one of the cerebral markers of the immune system. And what we found here, every dot is a patient that this interleukin-8 is six months after COVID when they developed the disease, is um, elevated in, in more than half of the patients. And uh, there's some decrease, but uh, many uh, patients still had signs of elevations um, uh, at month 12. And we also focused on autoantibodies, and actually there are several autoantibodies which have been described in MECFS. So far there is not the one diagnostic antibody. Most knowledge we have is about antibodies against stress receptors, which fits well to the clinical observation that the stress response is disturbed. And um, we um, found that autoantibodies to such receptors are elevated in up to half of the MECFS patients. And uh, studies show that these antibodies can indeed disturb autonomic function, the stress response, and also the perfusion, how we distribute our blood, especially into the brain, into the muscles. And we see that the higher the levels of these antibodies are, the more um, severe the symptoms are. And it could also be shown, especially by the Japanese group, that um, there are specific alterations in the brain, probably also indicating impaired perfusion or inflammation, um, uh, which are associated with um, uh, the levels of these antibodies. Well, um, based on this knowledge, um, you can, of course, develop targeted therapies. Actually, there are already many drugs licensed to treat um, immune dysregulation to treat autoantibody, but also to treat um, hypoperfusion. And we were lucky in Germany in 2022, we got funding um, from the government and um, my group at Charité got 10 million euro to build up a clinical trial platform because at that time, and that's unfortunately still true, the drug companies weren't interested to do any clinical trials with us. So we built our own regulatory platform. It's a lot of regulatory work to do clinical trials, all these data protection things, and um, we built a biomarker platform to understand uh, better the mechanisms in the patients we treat before and after therapy. We built up this specific diagnostic platform, and then we focused on three pathomechanisms, autoantibody, inflammation, and hypoperfusion. Um, and um, I'm going to show you only in the last minutes um, the results um, we um, have from this trial, um, uh, immunoabsorption is a technique um, to remove um, all immunoglobulins for some weeks. Um, it's sort of a dialysis technique, so similar to what patients with chronic kidney disease get. But with this machine, we just uh, pull out um, the antibodies or immunoglobulins. And if they cause the disease, such autoantibodies, and uh, we did this in patients with elevated beta-2 adrenergic receptor antibodies. If they are disease causative, then the patient should feel better after removal of the antibodies. We included patients with MECFS, uh, which uh, they developed uh, due to COVID. And um, I show you some of the results. In total, we treated 20 patients. And now um, this is um, the... Um, uh, this is a questionnaire assessing the functional capability of these patients. Uh, it's um, uh, with 100 points means you are healthy, and if you have zero points, you lay flat and can't do anything. And um, the patients had on average 27 points, so they were quite sick. Before um, immunosorption, then they received five treatments. So that's the green um, uh, column. And then thereafter, uh, we saw them four weeks later, and they had a very good improvement in their functional capability. So they were um, a little bit beyond 60. So this means that they are back in life. This was seen in 14 um, of these 20 patients. Six did not improve with this um, treatment. And as you see the course over the next six months, um, 
The symptoms came gradually back, but they are still better. However, this is not a cure because the patients, of course, still had symptoms. A cure would mean that they go at least above 80 or 90. I show you here um, that also the pain got um, much better, that the cognition got much better here. This questionnaire is the upper way down. And several other symptoms, including um, the hand grip strengths, got better. This is a very important information for us, telling us that by removing autoantibodies, you are able to treat MECFS. And actually, this is not a new finding because we have had already these pioneering studies from Norway, from Eustein Fluge and Olaf Meller, when they performed these studies already um, uh, in 2010, showing that rituximab, which is a drug which can target and de lead such um, auto-reactive antibody-producing B cells, um, results in long-term clinical remission in, in many patients. They also did uh, trials with endoxan, cyclophosphamide, which, which has, was shown to have a similar efficacy. They could also show that the um, perfusion improved uh, by this approach. There are many papers uh, from these uh, guys on this uh, treatment. However, rituximab had also several problems, had side effects. It was the very first drug uh, which was developed, and unfortunately, they couldn't bring it to licensing. But now, almost 15 years later, we have many more novel drugs which are already licensed in many other autoimmune diseases. Now it's really the time that we go into new clinical trials and um, try these drugs. And the great thing is Eustein will uh, next present you already data with one of these um, drugs um, against the CD38 uh, molecule. In Berlin, we um, have early um, data with CD19 targeting and saw also very good improvement um, uh, in these patients. So this is really now a great chance for us to, um, uh, to, to use these drugs, which are already licensed, to treat MECFS. And um, it's also, um, there are several international trials ongoing. I just want to mention that um, in Germany, we have another large um, multicenter trial ongoing with a very interesting drug, which comes from multiple sclerosis, which also can improve um, inflammation and can destroy um, um, antibody producing B cells. Um, there is a trial with rapamycin, a very interesting target. David Putrino and others are currently doing in the US. Um, and there are other interesting trials, and we hope that these results will uh, be available in the next um, 12 months. So, to sum up, we have evidence that autoantibodies do play an important role, at least in a subset of MECFS, and that this treatment has efficacy in a subset but we urgently need more support to develop that therapy. This is a greeting from um, the people who work with me and um, these are the people supporting our work. We have a website in Berlin with many information for physicians, for patients, also on English. And um, next week we will meet in Berlin for another MECF. S conference, so uh, we invited many of those who are here today also and many more. And um, you may um, able, be able to follow this conference because there's a free live stream. You just have to register. This is on the site. You just have to put in MECFS conference uh, 2025. And um, so um, thanks uh, to you again. and. Um, this is uh, to my old friend Eustein, so we've known for 15 years, and um, I'm looking forward now to his presentation. Mm -hmm.